main message of my presentation at the CHAD meeting this year has been about the health consequences of ADHD and specifically how those might add up over time and accumulate to the possibility that there might be an adverse effect of ADHD on a person's life expectancy. Now we looked at that in several ways. First of all, there is a literature on ADHD related to its adverse health impact. We know that ADHD children are more prone to obesity as they develop. We know that the girls in particular might be prone to eating disorders like binge eating. Uh, we also know there are problems with dental care and increased dental infections and uh, dental trauma. Uh, we have known for years that ADHD children are prone to accidental injuries of all kinds uh, and that they're three times more likely to go to the emergency rooms or to be admitted for surgeries because of their accidental injuries. So there is a background of science that's been going on for well over a decade or longer suggesting that ADHD is more than just a mental health or an educational problem. But it might be a health problem. And, and we need to pay attention to these various findings. More recently, longitudinal studies like mine, Milwaukee follow-up study, suggested that when we look at the life course of these people over the 20 years or so we're following them, we're also seeing increases in other risks that might relate to life expectancy. There is an increased rate of uh, teen pregnancy, sexually transmitted disease, uh, risky driving, road rage, car accidents, and speeding tickets, and other forms of risk taking by adolescents, an increased risk of uh, tobacco use, alcohol use, uh, particularly by adulthood, also an increased risk of using marijuana. So there's a growing risk of that along with perhaps some kids entering a pathway toward greater antisocial behavior, uh, reactive aggression and violence toward others. Now all of these carry some kind of impact on likely risk of, of mortality. So there's that second piece of evidence that began to suggest that we need to take this more seriously for its health consequences. And then recently in the past four or five years there have been several studies that actually use large populations of children and adults and looked at how likely are people diagnosed with ADHD to die from their ADHD or its, its high-risk activities. Uh, and they indicate that children are about twice as likely to die during childhood from ADHD and the proneness to accidental injury that it creates. So it's not so much the ADHD, but ADHD causes them to be impulsive and uninhibited and, and take risks. And then in adulthood, that risk doubles again to being almost five times the likelihood of dying sometime during the next 10 year period, again from largely accidental injuries and to a much lesser extent suicide attempts. So my research comes in in the midst of these different uh, pathways in the literature suggesting that there could be some effect on life expectancy. How many years do you have left to live by the time you reach young adulthood? That's what life expectancy means. So what we did is we took our Milwaukee study where we had done complete physical exams on all the children. We happened to be in luck where the University of Connecticut provided free to investigators a uh, formula, an algorithm, a calculator essentially that you could go into and enter 14 different variables about a child uh, at follow-up and get a number back on what you would expect to see as the reduction in life expectancy for that individual. Uh, and the life insurance industry uses these methods all the time. So th this isn't new, it's just that we couldn't get access to those formulas because they're largely proprietary. They're, they're highly protected by the insurance industry. Uh, and so that's what we did. And uh, the results were, at, on the one hand, very sobering for us in, in what we learned when we did this with our children. Uh, but at the same time, they were very encouraging that this was an area that we needed to pay much more attention to. So the end result, and what I spoke about at, at the CHAD meeting, is that we found that if you were diagnosed with ADHD as a child, there was going to be about a nine-year reduction in your life expectancy, particularly for your healthy years of life, than in comparison children who we followed to adulthood who didn't have ADHD. So just ADHD in childhood alone was going to shorten life expectancy uh, for about eight to nine years of time. 
The real information that was more important to us, I think, was what happened if ADHD lasted to adulthood. So by age 27, if you still qualified for an ADHD diagnosis, the reduction in life expectancy was around 12 to 13 years. And that was shocking to us. It may not sound like much to people when you take an average age of, say, 75 years of life for the average person, and you reduce it by about 12 or 13 years. That doesn't sound like a lot, but, but it really is. Um, and to put it in perspective, what I discussed in my program was if you compare this to all of the things we are concerned about in our population, improving the quality of life in adults, we're concerned about smoking. ADHD is three times worse than smoking. We're concerned about people who smoke a lot. Well, ADHD is twice as detrimental to your life expectancy as people who smoke 20 or more cigarettes a day. Uh, we're concerned about excess alcohol use. Well, ADHD is five to six times worse than being concerned about excess alcohol use. Uh, what about obesity? We're concerned about that. Our population's getting larger. Uh, I don't mean in, in terms of population numbers, in terms of just size of the people. We have an obesity problem in the United States. ADHD is markedly worse. In fact, when we looked at our numbers, if you took the biggest four public health concerns that people worry about, that governments spend billions of dollars to try to reduce, that's obesity, that's smoking, uh, that has to do with risk for diabetes, uh, it also has to do with things like exercise and diet. If you add those things together, ADHD is still two and a half times worse in its impact on life expectancy than the major areas of health that we're concerned about with our population. So the message is ADHD is a public health problem. It will affect not only your risk of mortality as a child or as an adult, it will affect your lifespan and longevity if it is not treated during that period of time, particularly during the crucial adolescent years. Now, that's the sad news, that there is a detrimental effect of the disorder on life expectancy. The good news is all of the variables that we found that were reducing life expectancy can be changed. Whether it's exercise or sleep or nutrition or getting more education or losing weight or cutting down smoking or eliminating smoking or reducing your alcohol intake or you know, driving better, all of these things can be changed. And if you change them, then they change the results of these calculations and you improve your life expectancy. So the good news is we can do things to help these people lead nearly if not exactly normal life and life expectancy. Uh, and so to me that's very encouraging. The second thing that it says is that the people who are most likely to change those areas of life, who are primary care, internal medicine, cardiology, uh, your pediatrician, family practice, they don't know this. They don't know that ADHD is the big gorilla in the room when it comes to these other problems that children and adults are going to have. And so we need to make them much more aware of the role that they can play in helping us to improve the quality of life and lifespan of people with ADHD. But the, I, I think the conservative part of this is that we also found that about 30% of the variation in human lifespan was due to a single trait. And that was how impulsive, how uninhibited, how unconscientious you are in making decisions about your life and what you're doing. Because that was explaining why people with ADHD were more prone to smoke, to drink, to gain weight, to not exercise, to have impaired sleep, and so on, to drive with, with risky behavior. It was all related to this one background personality trait of being uninhibited, and lacking in, in conscientiousness. That's gonna be a little harder to change, but it can be changed. Our major treatments for ADHD we know do help improve these areas of personality. So whether it's medication or cognitive behavior therapy for adults or behavioral parent training with children or classroom management, we have ways of reducing risk-taking behavior uh, that might also be beneficial in addition to these very specific health change practices. Uh, so to summarize, in, in my opinion, the take home messages here is we have a public health problem. ADHD is worse than all the other things that we worry about when it comes to life expectancy. Nobody's paying attention to that aspect of this disorder. We need to take steps to make the public and professionals aware of these risks and to start to engage 
changing these particular risk factors because they are changeable. But at the same time, we also have to understand that it's an uphill battle because we're also dealing with a disorder of self-regulation that leads to disinhibited behavior and that that trait is going to be a little more difficult to change unless we use the major ADHD treatments to do so. So that's what we talked about to today uh, at the CHAD meeting and I think that's going to be a very strong and powerful message going forward to the public, to families with ADHD, to people in primary care, and I hope to government agencies that there's a risk here that's major and there's something we can do about it.